Chick and I, we've collected all the ingredients to make our own mash. Oh, wow. damn. That looks good. That's copper there. So we can go back in time and recreate this first sour mash whiskey. You know, I mean, Tickle, I mean, I really think this is exactly what they was making sour mash whiskey back in the 1800s. I'm trying to be as traditional as I can from the type of steel they was using and, and producing this alcohol. To the more traditional way that Catherine Carpenter would have produced the sour mash whiskey and the distillers before her. A perfect copper steel just like this, very simple. You got a pot and a cap and a condenser in yeah. a wooden barrel. You know, she was following moonshiners. And you know what? She was making this a long time before Dr. Crow. I mean, if we want that taste profile to be 1800s, we got to make it just like we was in the 1800s. I mean, it, this is it right here. I like the way they did the cape right here. And they put those rivets. They put rivets all the way on. It's like three rivets on each strip. You know, this still looks period correct. All we got to do is mash in. I can't wait to taste this stuff. You know, Tim, that's always my favorite part. Let's get over here next to this creek. <laughs> Me and Tickle, we're headed down to the creek to mash in, just like the old moonshiners would have. I'm really excited to get started on this run. You got to get this set back down, boy. I tell you, that stuff's heavy. That's heavier than the water. It's a whole lot heavier than the water. Yeah, it's got more in it. And I mean, hopefully, this whiskey turns out good. And then I want to take it back to Dave at Glens Creek Distillery and get a stamp of approval. Mm -hmm. Do your thing. You know, the first steps in mashing in, we got to use that Kentucky limestone water. The heirloom corn that we got, I want to mix that in there. It didn't really look like that when we ground it up. Well, you, you know, the color on the corn is just on the outside. Yeah, I know. Now you can see everything that was inside. Yeah, I mean, look at that. Now, I'll put, right. put a little bit of that in there. All right. But I also want to add some rye. I think the rye needs to put a little bit of spice in into it. You know, just think about when Catherine Carpenter, when she was farming, and the other guys before her, they was probably just getting whatever they could and put in there. And I mean, that's the moonshiner's way. You know, on Monday, you may get corn, and on Tuesday, you may get rye. But in this time, we're going to use a little bit of rye. That actually gives you that crisp flavor when that whiskey comes out of that steel. What we need next is setback. We got to get that setback in there, you know? I decided to go with Catherine's 50% more setback because you know, that's going to carry more flavor over. That's the flavor from the other previous run that you added to it. Well, so let's go it. ahead and put that in there. You just want to put all this in there, Let's do 50% set back in there. She was following a recipe that had been generations before her, so they were more concentrating on what it tastes like. But think about it, that's like flavor. That's almost like chocolate milk adding in there. Tickle, you know, when Crow was more concentrated on the yield than it was the flavor. Yeah. He's more about how much product can I get out and it still be That's sour right. mash whiskey. I think we'll just leave this open. You know, well, you know I'm sure the, that's the what Captain Carpenter did. Sure. Well, ain't nothing to it now but to let this thing work off. Come That's back in a few days. Do. What do you think there? Let's see what we got. Oh, yeah. Hey, we come back in a few days, we'll look at the mash, it tastes good, it looks like it's ready to run. Yeah, we done went down low, man. That's good. You get some water, yeah, fill a yeah. condenser up here. Hey, right, yeah. And I'm gonna, gonna start putting the mash in here. I reckon this is how Catherine Carpenter did it, too. We got to get that thing sealed up. Boy, it's gonna take a whole lot more than him. All right. I'm gonna dip the mash into the steel. We're going to fire this thing up. We're going to recreate the first sour mash whiskey. Let's get some steam, boss. Tick them. Got to stir it up some, man. It's getting hot over here. Got some right? water in that, in that condenser there. She's steaming good, yeah. It's yeah. about that time. That's what I'm talking about. This, like, puts us back in the woods, man. It blows that thing off, Tim. We better might all take off running. Yeah, if it comes off, hey, we in trouble. I mean, Tickle, you know, it's been a long time since me and you've been out of the woods doing this. 
just like Catherine Commander would have done it, but it's also just like we would have done it back in the day. 200 some years, we still doing it the same way. Doing it the same way. The same way. You know, make it pretty thick. No, we do not. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna push it in a little bit deeper there, check them, and then you come back and come back on top of it. All right. Eight panels. Eight panels on there, yeah. What if we call that an eight panel copper steel? I'm gonna call it money is what I'm gonna call it. Money? Took a fill that right there. Feel uh -huh. that heat coming right there? Uh, oh, that's yeah. That's alcohol. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's alcohol, that's alcohol right there. It's getting right hot. There. Yeah. It's getting yeah. hot. Yeah, that's coming on. All right. Well, it's still it. Howard built looks good. It, it's holding tight. It is. Yeah. I ain't seeing no leaks in it. I like it. it. I like it. It's sealed uh -huh. up good. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yes. She's, she's hot. She's hot. Ought to be coming out, Chick. Yeah, it's filling that cool up there now. You there you go. Hey, look at yonder. Uh -huh. Look at that. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely got that goal. Yeah. yeah. It's probably about, what, 80 proof, maybe? Uh, about 80 something proof, like sir. That. Something like that. Yeah. I reckon that's what they'd be running back in Catherine Carpenter's day, wouldn't it? I think so. We made that. Look at that. Ooh. Let's see what it tastes like. Yeah, yeah. Heirloom corn, right? What does it taste like, though? Good and cold, and it's almost like sweet corn look. We're tasting this sour mask whiskey, and you know, right off, I'm picking up some of the setback from the previous run that we got. I'm picking up some of that heirloom corn, and really, that spicy rye is coming right up front. You know what, Tickle? I sure am glad that we went with the 50% of setback in that, because Kathleen Carpenter, when she was making it, she was after the flavor. Mm -hmm. And I think if if we'd only put like 10% like James Crow did, we wouldn't have the flavor that well, we got. We might have got a little bit more yield out of it. But you wouldn't have that flavor. Wouldn't have the, the quality of it. Mm. If that's what the very first sour mash whiskey tasted like, I don't know why anybody would ever change the thing. Nana, we finished this run, and I got this sour mash whiskey. That's one last thing I like to do. Wait till you see what I got playing. Yeah, playing going on. I need to take this sour mess whiskey that we made, and I want to put it in a wood container because I want to store it just like they did in the 1800s. They was not using glass back then. Think about it. If you carry this on a wagon, it'd get broke before you got there. So I have, like, a small experimental barrel. OK. And it's just enough for us to pick up, you know, the notes. And I want to get that little color tint to it, but I don't want to change the flavor. You wouldn't think that that little barrel would hold both of those jaws. Well, that's all right. Well, that's all right. That's all we got right now. Nana, we got the sour mash whiskey in the barrel. I just want to give it a few days, let it sit, and then come back and see the effects of it. Does it change the color? Trust me. Trust me. Open these doors up, get some light. All right, we took them. Let's see if this barrel here has given our sour mash whiskey any color. Yeah, it's just gonna get a little from the oak, huh? Yeah, let's see what happens. I'm I'm seeing a little bit of color there. Yeah, a little bit of color. Huh? When they stored it in them wooden casts and containers and barrels, by the time they got to where it needed to be, it had a little bit of color to it. We got the color that we're looking for. I think we have just matched the exact same color, maybe a couple of months old of it being transported through the woods back in the 1800s. I mean, this thing looks perfect. We got to take it back to Dave at Glens Creek Distillery and let him try it. Another trip to Kentucky. Hey, hey. David. Yeah, we've been busy. We brought you something. I see that. Yeah. Looks good. Looks good. Do I get to try some? Well, that's, that's the big reason we back. Give us your opinion of it. Is this something that they made back in the 1800s? Smells good. Yeah. We didn't age it very much. It's not in a char barrel, nothing like that. Well, I hope he likes it. <laughs> what do you think? I mean, I get a nice wave of sweet on the front of that one and, and all the vanillas and caramels and stuff on the back, just like a sour mash to beat. I'm so happy the way this turned out, because we made something really special and so creative that no one else has ever tasted before. Well, I think you got it, and I sure want to keep this. Yeah, you can have it. We're going to make plenty more. It's really exciting to make the first sour mash whiskey, you know, and connect it with the distillers and the distillers of the past. 